We're now on Daf Lamed Aleph Lamed Beis, continuing to the next, which is the fourth Golos of Sanhedrin Miyavna Leusha. This is during the time of Gamliel. The fifth was Miyusha Liyavna, and the sixth was Miyavna Leusha. Again, going back during the time of Shimon Ben Gamliel. The seventh was Miyusha Lishfar Ra'am. The eighth was Mishfar Am Lebeis Sha'arim, and the ninth was Mibeis Sha'arim Litzipori, the tenth was Tzipori Litveri. And the lowest, so to speak, point that we ever reached in the history of Sanhedrin was in the tenth uh, Golos, which was Tveria, Tveria Amuka Mikulon. It was the, the deepest of all the exiles of Sanhedrin, Kromar. The goal is Zu Isa Sanhedrin Shfela Yoser Mikola Maso Shagilsad Oz. This is when we reached our bottom low point. Shenemar Vishafalta Vishafalt may Eretz Tidaberi who may offer Tisha Imrasek. Another opinion has it, Rabbi Loza Omer, Sheish Golios, Golos of Sanhedrin. There are only six Golios. And the Mepharshim say that the number six parallels the six months in which the Shechina was delayed in the uh, waiting in the Midbar, hoping that maybe Kalisa would do Tshuva. And since they didn't do Tshuva, connecting those six months that God waited, there were six Goliaths of the Sanhedrin. Shenemar ki heishech Yoshve Marom. Okay, let's read if it's English translation. So the previous posse was, you will sink down from the ground, you will speak. Downtrodden from the dust will be your speech. And Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Loza quotes a posse, for he has brought down those who dwell on high in an exalted city. He has lowered it. He has lowered it to the ground. He has brought it down to the dust. So there are six different parts lowering down mentioned in this passage. So he had brought down, that's number one, he had lowered it. He had lowered it to the ground. He had brought it down to the dust. Six times. And he has brought it down to the dust. It counts at two declines since the verse could have stated he has lowered it to the ground and the dust. Now he writes here in the name of the Paras Yosef that presumably Rabbi Lozen does not dispute the historical, historical account of the Sanhedrin's travels. Rather, based on his exposition, he maintains that 10 relocations count as six. He apparently counts Yavna and Usha as one exile each, even though the Sanhedrin moved back and forth repeatedly. And he counts the three relocations during Rebbe's lifetime as only one exile. Amar Abi Yochanan. Umishum, Umisham, excuse me, from Tveria, which is the low, lowest bottom barrel gullus of Sanhedrin, I see them we go. From there, we only move on to redemption. Nemar, Isna, Rime, Ofer, Kuri, Shvi. Now we learn the Mishnah. Oh, Rabbi Yishu, Ben Karachal, the Oat, Zos, Hiskin, Rabbi Yochan, Ben Zakai, Shafilu, Rosh, Bezdin, Bechal, Mokom. If let's say the Rosh Bezdin, who's really in charge of Kiddush HaChodesh in the Sanhedrin, he moves out of his place. He's on a trip somewhere. Nevertheless, according to Rabbi Yeshua ben Karchas Takana, which was established by Rabbi Yochum ben Zakkai, Lo yu ha'edim holchim el lemokam avat. We would not require the Aedim who want to testify that they saw the Levana for the purpose of Kiddush HaChodesh to, to move and follow the Rosh Bezdin. 
wherever he's found, but rather they go to the Mokum Avad, the place where the Dayanim are sitting, and there they will testify in front in the presence of those Dayanim, and Bezdin the Sanhedrin will be Makadish the Chodesh without the Rosh Bezdin. Mar tells us the following story. And he is a son, there was a woman who borrowed money and she was not paying back the money. The And the Malva subpoenaed her to a din Torah in the Bezdin of Amemar in the city of Nardot. Azal Amemar Limachosa. When they came to be judged in that Bezdin, Amemar was nowhere to be found in the city of Nardoi, but he was rather in a different city called Machosa. And the Malva demanded that this woman follow him to the Bezdin of Machosa, where Amemar could preside over this case. Below Osla Basre, she refused. She's a refusenik. And she says, I'm not going to go uh, travel to Tom Neymar. Let him come to me. <clears throat> and therefore, as a result of her rebellion, Kosav, uh, Neymar writes a document which is called Psicha Ila, which is a shtar nidu that puts her into a kind of quasi-excommunication state. And that's the law of a Misari, Misari the Sarban who refused to show up at best, and then you put a whammy on it. Omalera Vashila Mema. Wait a second, what about our Mishnah? Banan Tanan, I feel the Rosh Bezdin Bechol Mokom, even if the Rosh Bezdin checked out of the Bezdin. And he's somewhere else. Lo Hoyua Edim Old Kimela Mokom Avad. The Edim cannot be forced and compelled to follow the Rosh Bezdin and go to his Mokom where he's found. So why are you putting Nidhi on this woman if she doesn't want to go? To follow you, Amema. Omalais, Amema responds to Avashi Hani Mili. When does this apply that you can't force the Aden to go to the place where the Rosh Bezin is leading in Avis HaChodesh? Nim Ken, if we're going to be Matriat the Aden to go after the Rosh Bezin, Nim says, Machshil Yosid Lavo, they're not going to want to come in the future. It's too much of a hassle. Go tramps around and follow the Rosh Bezin wherever he is. So they made that takana, that was Rabbi Yeshua, in the name of Rabbi Yochum and Zakai, for the benefit of Kiddush HaKodesh. Avol Hocha, but here the woman is obligated to follow the Malva to the Bez, where the Malva decides he wants to go. And he has the, he has the, the authority to decide that we're going to this Bez, the Bez of Omeimar. If Omeimar's not here, we'll follow him to his Bez, wherever he is. And why is that so? Why does the Malva have all the cards in his deck? And he controls the situation. And she, the Lova, has to follow him. That's based on a Posk in Mishle, Eved Lova Lish Malva. The Lova is like a servant of the Malva. The Malva did a great chesed, extended a loan. And therefore, you should be Michna Milafana. And you should go to the place where he wants you to go for the judgment. We learned in a brisa. Ain hakohenim rashoim lalos kisan edgin ludufin. Vizo echad mitesha takana shehiskin Rabbi Yochum and Zakai. What's going on here is that the kohenim are wearing shoes, and there was a special place called the duchin, which was a mokal gavoa, and that's where they stood. When the Kohanim would recite the Birchas Kohanim. And Rabbi Yochum and Zakai now establishes that they take off their shoes before they go up to the Duchen. Now, the Gemara in Soto and Daf Mem originally thinks that the reason for this is because Kavad Atzibu. Because when, you, when the Kohen goes up and his gudim rise a little bit as he's climbing to the duchen, and then they see his shoes. Now, sometimes his shoes are dirty. They're full of cement or other kinds of mud. But the Gemara finally concludes in Sota 
that there's another reason, a totally different reason for this takana of Rabbi Yochum and Zaka. Ashu chacham shem tifasek l'koin v'tzua v'sandala. This was a takana that was instituted to protect the reputation or the stature of the Kohen. Why? Because the fear was that if the Kohen goes up with his shoes, his shoe might rip. That's called and at that point, the Kohen is going to get you embarrassed about it. And what he's going to do is he's going to go on the side to see if he can somehow fix the, the, the ritzua. And the people would, be, would now begin to suspect that maybe this Kohen is a Ben Grusha, Ben Kalutz, he's Pasul he's a Chal. So in order to avoid such situation, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai made this institution that he should take off his shoes before he goes up to the Dukhan. And the Brisa continues and says, Zu hiskin Rabbi Yochum and Zaka. So there were nine Takonas of Rabbi Yochum and Zaka. The Gemara is going to have a debate about this as we go through each one of the Takonas. Shis Dahai Pirka. You know, in our chapter here in Rosh Hashanah, we've already mentioned, let's review. Six takanas. Number one, the kohanim should take off their shoes before they go up to Dukhan. Number two, that in our time after the Churban Beis Hamikdash, we blow the shofar of Rosh Hashanah Chalil's Peshavas anywhere where there's a Bezdin. Number three, the Lulav in our time should be taken on all seven days of Chagasukas Mishum Zechel the Mikdash. Number four, that on the 16th day of Nisan, in our time, we should not be allowed to eat bin chadash during the entire course of the day until the night at the end of the 16th of Nisan. Number five, that Bezdin in our time should accept Edus on Kirsha Kodesh during the entire day. And number six, that the Edus Kirsha Kodesh Go to the Mokum Avad, they don't have to follow the Rosh Bezdin. So, so far, we're up to six. Vechada de Turka Kama. And now we have another number seven, which is the Takana that's codified in the first parak of Mesef the Rosh Hashanah, not our parak. And that is that the Eide Kilchakor should not be Machal Shabbos. During this time, meaning after the Churban Beis Hamikdash, when they come to testify, unless it's on two months out of the year, that's Nisan and Tishrei. And now we're up to number eight, the Edoch. What's the eighth Takana that was established by Rabbi Yochum ben Zakkai? The Sanya we learned in a Brisa. Yershin is Gary Miyada Dizmana said Sarch Yafrij Rova Lekino. Rova is a quarter of a shekel, which is equal to a half of a dinar, and he has to set aside this money for a can of shte torim or shne bneyono, which is an olasa of a ger, when he undergoes conversion during the time of the biggest study, he has to bring a carbon. In our time, he doesn't bring the carbon. We don't have it based on Mingus, but he has to be mafresh. He has to set aside the domain, the monies that he needs to purchase with which he'll purchase the carbon. And it's, it's kept in a, safe, in a safe place. And the reason for this is because Shemi Yibana Beis HaMikish Biyomov, if the Migish will be built, and he's now a Ger who has not bought his carbon, he will be able to bring his Olas from this funds that he designated for the Olas Ha'ov. Om Rav Shimon Lazar. Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai repealed this last uh, Takana because of Takola. What does it mean, Takola? Yesh Lofu Shema Yene Hager Betos Menamos Hamufrashos. For the Ger to set aside money that has the status of Kodshin. 
and is sanctified. And now he might use by mistake during the course of his lifetime these moles, then he's violating the Isa the Idach. Now we're up to number nine. And here we're going to have Machlokis. What was the ninth Hakana of Rabbi Yochum and Zaka? Look to the Rapapa of Nachbar Yitz. Rapapa Omar Kerem Ravai. These are grapes that grew during the fourth year since the planting of the vine. And, and we'll understand that in a minute. And Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Amar Lashon Shel Zahurus, the Takana, the last Takana on this list of Rav Yochum Zakai, was that ribbon with which they used to determine if Hakadosh Baruch Hu had accepted the Kapar of Klal Yisrael and Yom Kippur. Let's go through. Rav Papa, my Karim Ravai. What's the deal with Karim Ravai? Distan, we have. A Mishnah, now here's a discussion about whether it's actually a Mishnah. All right. So this is a Mishnah of a Sechta Maishushen in the fifth parakarim, Ravai Hoya Olo Yushalayim. Now, according to the law of the Torah, a person could be poda his revai outside of Yushalayim and bring the most to Yushalayim. But the Rabbana made Xerah and they outlawed Pidin and Bavim if you are very close to Yushalayim on any of its sides and the parameters or the, shall we say, the uh, circumference outside of Yushalayim, if it was Mahalach Yom, if you can get to Yushalayim within a day, and we'll soon see the boundaries. Now, why did the Chachamim make this Hakana prohibiting Hijon and requiring the people in the outlying areas around Yushalayim to bring their Anavim, which are Netaravai, Actually, Karen Ravai into Yushalayim and eat it there. So, the reason for this is to beautify Yushalayim, as we'll soon see. We'll explain in just a minute. Now, what is this area that's close one day's journey around Yushalayim? Zui Tchuma. And we're going to go through north, east, west, and south, the cities around Yushalayim that were one day's journey from Yushalayim. A lot Minadarom, hence the name a lot in the modern city of Eilat. I doubt if it's the same place, but anyway. The Akrabas Minatzafon, Lod Minamara, the Yarde Minamiz, all these cities were within a day's journey to Yushalayim. The Omar Ula, the Itema Rabba Bar Omar Rabbi Yochum, the name of Yochum, Atam. Why did they institute this Hakana? They were at their Yushalayim Beperos. Shvaka Yushalayim Beperos. No, it's they wanted an abundance of fruits in Yushalayim. And that would beautify Yushalayim. Many Hakanas were made in order to beautify Yushalayim. Now, how did the Chachamim accomplish this goal through this takana when the Paris of Ravai have Kedusha, they're not sold in the market. So the Rush explains in his commentary on the mission in Maisu Shani that since he has this abundance of Ravai of grapes that he has to eat is therefore Yisharu Shar Paris of Chulun L'Mechir B'Shur there'll be abundance of Paris of Hulin available to be sold in the market. And the only thing I, I don't like about this is what about the people who want to sell in the market? I mean, if, if everyone's bringing their anomaly, you know, they don't have to, you know, if you were, I guess you'd have to find those Paris uh, that are not included in Revive. Anyway, Anya, we learned in a bright second, Revive, how you know, the Rebbe Lezer, Lud, now, Lud, as we said before, is on the 
western side, but within one day's journey of Yushalayim. And Rabbi Eliezer was a wealthy guy, and he owned a vineyard. Bitsad Bar Tovi. Okay, that's where it was located. Why did Rabbi Eliezer decide that he's going to be mafkir his uh, grapes for the poor people? And let and the answer is because since he's not allowed to do a pigeon, but he's within that proximity to Shalayim, it's going to be a real hassle for him to bring all his Paris of Ravai to Shalayim. It's such a Torah that he would rather give these fruits, these grapes, over to the Aniyim and let them, let them carry the Paris of Shalayim. Let them get the midst of eating Ravai in Shalayim. And now, the Talmidim of Rabbi, Elie- of Rabbi Eliezer are going to notify him, so to speak, appraise him of the fact that this Takana, which enjoined him from doing a pigeon, was repealed. So, Amulo Talmidim, please underline the word Talmidim. Rabbi, Nimnu Chavercha Olecha. Nimnu means when they took a vote in the Bezdin. And your colleagues took a vote on this din, and he tiru. They, re- they repealed the original xera, and they allowed pigeon and halos domim yushalayim. And the reason for this is because after the churban of yushalayim, the whole time, the whole reasoning behind this takana, kidei la'ater as yushalayim, is gone. So there's no longer an interest here, a concern, of the Chachamim Bala Torah Biperos. And Rapapa adds, Man Chavercha, to whom were these Talmidim alluding? Who was the colleague that repealed the original uh, Xera? And therefore, Abelessa would be allowed to take his camera vibe back. He would allow him to be poded and take the money to Shalim Rabbi Yochim and Zak. So this is number nine, and soon we'll see why Rav Nachman Yusuf rejected this. Anyway, Rav Nafar Yisuf Omar, what was the ninth takon of Rabbi Shuv, Rabbi Yochum and Zaki, Losh and Shel Zerus, the son? We learned in a verse of Rishon, are you koshrim? Losh and Shel Zerus, al Pesach, ulam mi bachutz. They took this red ribbon and they tied it in a place where the entire nation could see it, or those who were close in any way. And that was Pesach, ulam mi bachutz. So that the people of Israel would see after the Sar Lazazel was pushed off the precipice that the uh, crimson woolen ribbon would turn white. But again, it might not turn white, which means it's bad news and Hashem is not the proper on the Avonus. In Lo Hilbin, Hilbin, are you smechim? They were all happy. That there was a cup for the Avonis, low hill, you know, you had saving, they were sad. And the Chachom were not happy about this situation where everybody has acts, everybody could see a vision of the Lashon Shel Zahuris. And why exactly were they opposed to this idea? And there are two possible answers to that question. One is, why? If the people would see that the crimson turned, the crimson ribbon, the ribbon, uh, ribbon turned white, they would be in ecstasy. That would undermine the solemnity of the mood of seriousness in Pachad Hadin. The other approach is that if in event the crimson ribbon did not turn white, then the people would be down in the dumps. Now, he quotes the Yom Trua, who says that if the people will be sad, then Yura, with an eye in Yura, Mazolam Mishumkach, that's going to have a negative impact on their Maz. Anyway, this, uh, this is a discussion unto itself. So his kinushu kosher no sal pesach ulam ibachutz. So they changed the location and they didn't tie it in the pesach ulam ibachutz, but rather al pesach ulam ibifnim. But a dayin hoyu matzitzim. 
they would still look through the opening of the ulam and they would see it even they ever row him. He'll be no yusmeth lo him oyitzam. His kinu shu koshen also chetzib b'selam chetzib in front of shel sara mishtalim. So the final takana, which Rav Nachman Yisro contributes to Rav Yochanan and Zakai, was that they would put it on half tied to the horn between the horns of the of the. Uh, he says, so goat of the goat that was sent out, and half was on the cellar, and they pushed the sawyer over the crescent. Now the Gemara says, Why does each Amora reject the other one? If you're going to think that Rabbi Yochum and Zaka was the one who was quoted by the Talmud of Rabbi Leza, that he himself was Mati bringing Karen Ravai from. A, uh, he was Matir being Koder, Karen Ravai, even in the cities that are proximate to Yushalayim, is then Chavera of the Rabbi Eliezer Bihavi. Was Rabbi Yochum and Zakai a colleague of Rabbi Eliezer? Rabohai. Rabbi Akiva, I'm sorry, Rabbi Yochum and Zakai was the Rebbe of Rabbi Eliezer. So how can the Talmudim say that? Oh, your chaver, your colleague, allowed this. He permitted your pigeon. It cannot be that this takana permitting the pigeon was instituted by Rabbi Yochum and Zaka. It must be somebody else. The Edoch and Rabbi Papa, he holds that Rabbi Yochum and Zaka established this takana of Karen Ravai. What is he going to respond to this argument of Rabbi Nachar Yitzhak? Even the Talmidim Ava, Lav Orach Aro Lemeimole Lerabe Rabcha. Since these were students of Rabbi Eliezer who were pointing this out to him, it's not Derech Eretz, it's not a meat of Derech Eretz that they should say to their Rebbe, Rabcha, your Rebbe was Masaking zones, as if to say, oh, you didn't even know about your Rebbe's Takon. So therefore, they use that term diplomatically, Chaverech. Rab Papa, he also said the last Takon, the ninth Takon was. Karen Ravai, my time alone, Omer Krab Nachman Bar Yitzha. Why did he reject the idea that Takana was the Lush and Shel Zuhurus? Omer Lecha, Rav Papa would say to you, Isal Kedaita, if the Takana of Lush and Shel Zuhurus was Rabbi Yochum and Sakai, then I don't understand. There's a historical glitch over here. Why? The Yemei Rabbi Yochum and Sakai, the Havi Lush and Shel Zuhurus, this whole uh, institution, this enterprise where the Lush Shalzus turned white didn't exist during the time. Rabbi Yochum and Zakai, Vatanya, Kol Shnosus, Rabbi Yochum and Zakai, Bevi Esrim Shana. We divide up his 120 years into three parts. Arbaim Shana, the first 40 years of his life, Osak, Kuprak Matya, he was a each Mitzvah. Arbaim Shana, the second middle 40 years, Lama Tori was studying Torah. Arbaim Shana, the last 40 years of his life, he was teaching Torah and he was establishing all his Takonos. Miss Sanya, and we learned in a price. Our boy, Shona Kodum Shenech Rabbi Habayis, Lo Haya Lashon Shel Zahuris Malbin Elamadim. It remained red, this crimson color of the woolen ribbon during the 40 years before Chorban Habayis. Usnan, and we learned in a Mishnah. Mishachar Habayis, Hiskin Rabbi Yochum and Sakai, meaning, that Me'achar Matzim Shachar Achurban Adain or Rabbi Yochum and Zakai lived even after the Churban. So the 40 years at the end, the last third of his life, and that was the period of time when he was Masaki Matanos, that was during the last 40 years of the Churban. And at that time, already the Lashon ha, ha Zahuris was not turning white. So how could it be that Rabbi Yochum and Zakai made such Takon of it and what's of Nachbar Yitzhak going to respond to this claim of Rav Papa? Osam Arbaim Shona de Laman, during the 40 years in the middle section of his life segment of Rabbi Yochum and Lachai Saif, he was learning Torah, and that was before the 40 years of, before the Churban, at that time the Lashana was still mal. And Talmud Lufnei Rabbo Hava, although he was still studying Torah, but he was like a Talmud who sat in front of his Rebbe, the Omer Milsa, and he would say something, and it suggested to his Rebbe, and 
That's how the Takana came about. This is Tabar Taima. He would explain to his Rebbe exactly why he thinks that this Takana should be made. And then the Takana was made. And here on Lamed Beis, the Have Rabbi Bishmei. And when the Rebbe actually accepted the compelling logic of Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai the Talmud, and he made this Takana, he attributed it to Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai, and therefore it should be counted amongst all the Takanos of Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai. And this was a Takana afterwards during his last 40 years of his life. And therefore the Brisa considers it as part of the nine Takanos of Rabbi Yochanan ben So this is where we're going to stop. And Amir Sashem tomorrow, Kaminian Lev.